brand new Apple MacBook Pro with Touch Bar, I'm gonna tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Hey, Dave Taylor here again, and this time I'm looking at the brand new Apple MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. Yes, brand new, literally, I've had it 24 hours, and I've had a lot of time to work on getting everything from my old MacBook Pro onto this device, and had some time to try out the keyboard, the display, the different USB-C plugs, and of course the touch bar. So, I thought I'd give you a quick rundown with just a little bit of experience on this laptop. And first, I wanna say it's fast, it's light, it's a really beautiful piece of engineering. I mean, Apple really knows how to make really nice devices. And the touch bar, and I'll give you some close-ups. The touch bars, it's interesting. I feel like it's waiting for some really compelling apps. But one thing I did find, and I'll show you here in this cutaway, is that when I'm listening to music, which I do a lot, and by the by, um, the speakers are really amazingly good. It's a significant step up on speaker sound quality. But when I'm listening to music through iTunes, I go into the scrubber, as you can see here on the touch bar, and that gives me all the controls I want, and it makes it super easy to move back and forth on a song, or if it's a song I really like, say, I think I'd like to hear this song again. So I like that a lot. Now, what else can I tell you? The screen's beautiful, it's bright, vivid. I mean, you know, it's the Apple Retina screen, so we already know that's really good. The keyboard's a little different. It's a little clickety, so here, you know, it's a little loud, but I'm finding that with just a tiny bit of adjustment, it's pretty easy for me to get used to. Um, let's see, what else? Um, having the ports, the USB-C, Okay, it's a little bit of a drag. I miss some of my old ports, but you know what? I bought a bunch of new cables. I bought new wires. I have a USB-C to lightning, which works fine with my phone. You know, it has an audio out jack, rather amazingly, so I can do that. But everything, frankly, I use Bluetooth. And I did need to buy a Thunderbolt 2 adapter because I used a hard drive, an external hard drive, to both do a full and complete backup of my old MacBook Pro and to use that as the source to copy across everything onto the new one. Now, I do wanna say that every single time when I get a new computer, I never do like a disk clone. I actually go through the steps and reinstall all of the apps. And it might be just superstition on my part, but what I think is that when you have new hardware, you don't wanna use preferences and settings from previous hardware configurations. So it's taken me probably three, four hours to get everything just so, get logged into iCloud and all the Google apps and you know all this other stuff. So it's a little bit of work, but price well paid. Now, I wanna show you, so I thought I could do one fun thing, is actually show you how fast it is. So here I am, one of the things people have complained about is they've said, oh, you know, there's not enough RAM, so you're not gonna be able to do things like run virtual machines. So you can watch and time it. I'm gonna launch VMware Fusion, and then I'm gonna launch Ubuntu Linux. I have a full Linux install that I experiment with. So you ready? Go. Okay, it's launching. Full screen, you can see on the bar, it's progress, and boom, it's totally ready to go. So, honestly, that's not too bad, and if you're suspicious that that's not true, I will click on something and you'll see within Firefox, it actually does change and give me a different screen. So, performance is rocking. Um, really, it's a pleasure after having years of using my 2012 generation MacBook Pro to go to this brand new one with a better processor. Is it the best processor in the industry? Honestly, it's such a moving target that no company can come out with state-of-the-art gear. There's always a newer chip that was released just 20 minutes after you finalized design. I don't actually really track that stuff. Performance, great. Screen, great. Keyboard, it's taken me a little getting used to. I know in 48 hours or maybe in a week, I won't even be aware of it. The massive touchpad, so far I haven't found any compelling reason why it's bigger, but I do have a suspicion that somewhere along the way I'll be able to use a stylus, and that'll become interesting. We'll see if that comes to realization. Touch bar, eh, 
you know, again, it's something where it's interesting and it definitely takes a little bit of getting used to because like if I want to change volume, I tap on the volume button and then it actually shows me a slider, but I don't need to actually put my finger over the slider to change the volume. So that's a little funky. The one thing that I think is most annoying though is the way they've changed the whole charging system. So I actually have the cords from previous generation chargers. These are going to be valuable commodities. You'll want to pick up one because when you buy the charger, basically this is what you get. You get, well, I mean, and it comes with the little tiny piece that lets you plug this directly into the wall, but that's it. It's just a little connector on it, right? It's a little USB-C connector, and that's it. That's all you buy if you buy a charger. When you get the computer, it comes with this, and it comes with the USB-C cable. And this is nice because this is a 10 foot long cable. So it gives you lots of flexibility, which is good because this plugs right into the wall. But here's the thing, Apple sort of messed up on two, count them, two different things here. The first one is that, and this might be super first world problem-y, there's no light, there's no indication that A, it's charging and the wire's hot, or B, that it's charged and you can now unplug it. And I've lived for years and years and years and years with tons of different computers and they all have some way for you to see how charged they are without actually opening the computer, except for this. I have no idea what Apple was thinking, but there's a company called Moshi and they actually have a USB-C to USB-C cable with a little tiny indicator light in it that will change color when your computer's fully charged. So that's nice and I'll be getting one of those to test. But that still doesn't address the second issue. And the second issue is the whole MagSafe thing. And for that, I'm glad to say my friends at Griffin have come up with a really cool thing called, uh, what do they call it? Uh, the BreakSafe breakaway power cable. And this is going to be something that everyone's just going to go buy because it's such a simple, smart thing. This is exactly what you should have included, Apple. So USB-C to USB-C, but ta-da! It's a magnetic brake. So I can now plug it in, and if someone trips on the wire, it just comes off instead of breaking in the port. I mean, seriously, Apple, I don't know what you guys were thinking, but this is just bad design. And um, let's go ahead and plug it in and double check that it all works. Uh, we go, we go here, we go here, <laughs> maybe, there we go. And the only thing that Griffin didn't do is they didn't have the indicator light. So, you know, really nice design. And you can see it's a very simple, sleek little wire and it has the MagSafe and it's a pretty strong magnet. So that's really cool. And this is definitely gonna be in my travel kit because I don't wanna have something broken off. But man, Griffin, put a little indicator light in there or Moshi, make a breakaway, or better yet, Apple Computer, make this cable that you include, thank you very much for including a cable so I can charge my laptop, make this have A, breakaway, or MagSafe, whatever you want to call it, and B, some sort of indicator light. Or failing that, have a design on the laptop itself, so maybe there's a little tiny light somewhere that I can look at and say, oh, it's orange, I still need to charge, or it's green, I'm good. So, that's the ugly part of this. And that part is just, I don't know what the deal is. Maybe like the best engineers weren't allowed to work on the power system, but all in all, I actually like the new computer. There's a lot to really like about it. It's light, it's beautifully designed, it's clearly faster than my previous generation MacBook Pro. Um, Keyboard, I'll have to get used to a little bit. Touch bar, looking forward to seeing what app developers are gonna do with it. I think there's gonna be some really neat stuff coming out, and I already like the emoji. I don't care, label me as silly, whatever. I like this toolbar full of emoji, it just makes it fun. And otherwise, expensive, 3,000 bucks. 3,000 bucks. See how well that MagSafe worked? Oh, I'm sorry, breakaway, whatever. Um, but that's a lot of money, and you know what? This is also my primary tool for using for all of my computing work, so it's an investment well made. So, this is Dave Taylor. This is the 2016 MacBook Pro with Touch Bar and four, count them, four USB ports. 
And I hope you've subscribed to my channel just so you can get more updates, not just on this, of course, but all the other technologies I look at. And hopefully that Moshi cable once I get one. And I will catch you in my next video.